Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome everyone to another creative kickoff with yours truly, Terry White. I will be doing some Photoshop work today and today we're gonna just kind of really wrap things up with part three of what I've been calling how I would edit your photos. It never really ends, but I've been doing this like three times in a row. So I think next time we'll move on to something a little different, but we'll always come back to it when the time comes uh, for you guys to be able to see how I, my process for editing your user submitted photos. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So as always, if you are watching this, um, wherever you're watching this, cool. You can hang out wherever you are. I will be um, taking the chat from uh, multiple sources. So I see, for example, Howard Young on YouTube, Tim on YouTube, Jamie on YouTube, and I see... Uh, General Kenobi and Victoria and various other people on uh, or, or <laughs> on Adobe Live's chat. Uh, and if you want to participate in the main chat, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live, which is right there. So you can uh, see be participating in the main chat. And that way, if I don't see your, um, your comment or question, uh, the moderators will see it. So the other chats aren't being moderated. This one is. And that way you get a chance to get in your question answered one way or the other. I definitely see your request for how about doing a composite? And that is not the first time that's come up. Uh, so we will talk about doing composite work in one of the upcoming uh, Photoshop creative kickoffs because that is something that more than one person has asked for. All right. And so with that said, let's finish off this last one of, for a while at least, uh, how I would edit your photos. And for those of you who are... Um, asking like oh hey how do i submit my photos as i always say uh, i post a link usually be uh, in this case it was a full week before the stream so i i put this out like last wednesday and you had all week to submit photos and so i usually take new photos and edit them i take some of the previous photos that i never got to and edit them and this time i went way back and got some photos that i hadn't touched you know since they were submitted way back when and move them up in the queue so they get edited first this time around. And we just, uh, they're, they're, I, I don't really even pay attention to who submitted what. So I'm just picking photos and, and editing them. And uh, usually the newer ones get edited first, but I usually like to go back and not miss some of the photo or not skip some of the photos that were submitted earlier. All right. One of the things that um, I will probably do next time I do this is I will also... Um, make a permanent link because I thought about it and I was like, I usually make a link the week of and it expires the night before and then you can't submit any photos because it's too late. And I thought, well, why do I care if I'm not going to get to them all anyway? You can just keep submitting photos and I'll just keep adding them. And when I get to them, I get to them. So next time around, we'll make a link that doesn't expire. And that way, that will be the permanent link that you can always use to submit your photos. All right, so with that said, let's not take any other time. I only got like 21 minutes left anyway. Let's go ahead and jump right over to my computer where I always start in a catalog that I created specifically for this. How would I edit your photos? It's, it's a Lightroom Classic catalog. None of these photos are mine. These are all user submitted. <clears throat> and um, a lot of the workflow from photo to photo is pretty similar, if not the same, especially the Lightroom part. But then there are specific things I do, of course, for each photo, depending on what the photo, what's going on in the photo. Um, some photos need minor work, hardly any. Some photos need a lot of work, some that I don't even have time to do everything I would normally do, but I, I, I at least talk through the process. All right, so we have our first photo here. And this is one of those where it doesn't need a lot of work. There's not a lot to do to this. This is a photo of a portrait. Composition's good. Lighting's good. Um, yeah, there's not a ton I would need to edit on this. Uh, there's a couple minor things, but let's go ahead and deal with those right now. So I'm going to pop over to the develop module. And in the develop module, or if you're using Lightroom Cloud, this would be the edit, ta edit uh, tab or, or whatever it's, you know, the edit panel. Panel, that's what it would be called. And uh, I'm going to, first of all, this is a raw file, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it to um, Adobe Portrait. And again, that just sets my groundwork or my ground plane. It, it's not 
going to make a drastic difference on the photo when you switch to any of these raw profiles. And you're only going to have these raw profiles if it's a raw file. If it's a JPEG, you're not going to have any of these. Uh, and you can also do camera portrait, which will look different because that's using the portrait settings from the camera. So that's going to be different than Adobe's generic portrait or generic landscape. So that's why I added camera landscape and camera portrait as well to pick up what the camera thought a portrait should look like. So it's a little darker um, to use camera portrait. So I'm going to stick to Adobe portrait and go from there. Now, uh, next thing I do is I usually always, always, always on no matter what kind of photo it is, hit auto because auto tone is AI based. It will look at the photo, look at photos that were, you know, that in its machine learning that were like this and move the sliders. As I've said every single time, that doesn't mean it's perfect. That doesn't mean I agree with every slider, but it stops me from having to adjust every single slider manually when it can do maybe 80%, 90%, 60% of the work. And then therefore I only need to tweak the ones I don't agree with. So I'll hit auto. And most of these I agree with. Now I noticed up here in the in histogram that uh, the the shadows or the blacks triangle is 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 lit up. That means it's white and this one's grayed out. So the there's some shadows being completely filled in. And as I hover over that, I can see they're being completely filled in in her hair. Now, if it were filled in in a corner or the background or some part of the furniture or whatever that I don't care about, then it wouldn't be a big deal. But that means that parts of her hair are solid black. I actually was shocked because I thought parts of her dress would be solid white, but I'm not getting a highlight warning. I'm only getting the black warning. So that means that there are parts of her hair that are being filled completely in with black. So I could just drag right below that slider to the right to move. Now notice what it's doing. I'm dragging the histogram left and right. Look at what slider it's moving. It's moving the black slider. So as soon as I move it far enough over to where the warning goes away, then there's no more problem with um, parts of the image being completely filled in with black. So that's why I like doing that here. Um, now, auto, I don't like, for example, that it adjusts uh, saturation on people. I like, usually like to keep my saturation at zero on people because I don't like it overdoing the skin tones. Um, vibrance is okay, even though she doesn't need vibrance. So I might go ahead and tone that back down to zero as well. Like she's not wearing bright color clothes or anything like that. The lipstick, lipstick is only bright color and it's bright enough. I don't need anything there. So, uh, I usually turn those back to zero unless something needs vibrance. All right. Um, now there is one more thing that I don't get a chance to talk about a lot and that is, um, sharpening. So I, I normally would do this in Photoshop, but just to show you where I would do it here, if I was going to do it here, uh, I, I shouldn't say that in this class, I normally do it in Photoshop, but since if it was Lightroom class, I'd be doing it in Lightroom, but just to show you where it is, uh, there is a masking option, uh, that we don't talk about enough. So sharpening gets applied to every raw photo by default, 40, 40 amount, 40. That's every raw photo you open is going to be sharpened automatically because some of the process of sharpness is lost in just the conversion process, bringing a raw file in, opening it up, it puts that sharpen back in. But I don't want skin sharpened on um, soft subjects, females, babies, so forth and so on. So uh, there's a mask to accommodate for that. If you hold down your option or alt key while you drag the mask, then you can see what areas of the photo are going to get sharpened. Right now with on zero, everything gets sharpened. If I move it all the way to 100, almost nothing gets sharpened. What's, what's sharpened is what remains in white. So I want the eyes to be sharpened, but I don't want the skin to be sharpened. So I'm gonna move that mask just to about right there, about 96%. Now, if I drag the sharpen slider over, it's not sharpening her skin. It's like, if you can see, I'll drag it all the way to the left where it's no sharpening. You can see her eyes soften a little. If I drag it over to the right, you can see her eye, not too far because it's too sharp. Uh, you, you start to see her eye sharpening and it's starting to um, get a little artifacty. So I'm going to pull it back just a bit. And so I, it was on 40. I'm going to pull it back to about 70. All right. So that way I get some good sharpening on everything else except 
I'm sorry, I get some good sharpening on all the things I don't want. I want sharpened except skin. I don't want skin sharpened. All right, now, I could leave it at that and we would be done with this photo, but let's hop over to Photoshop because there's one more thing I want to do that Lightroom can't do. And that's why we go to Photoshop in the first place. So I'm going to hit on my uh, keyboard, Command E, PC, Control E. That will pop over a copy of this. It's always a copy. And if it's a JPEG, it will ask you if you want to make a copy. It'll pop that copy over. And there's only one more thing I want to do here. And that is I want to adjust for the, um, for the crop. Right now, there's a little bit more headroom than I would, I would use. Uh, so I would bring that crop down. But while we're at it, we could do that in Lightroom. But while we're at it, I want to crop to a specific aspect ratio which Lightroom can do, but let's go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. I want to, I want to crop to an aspect ratio uh, that is great for posting photos to Instagram. So four by five, eight by 10 is the portrait aspect ratio that Instagram wants. Now, if I do that, I can pull her image up and I still keep her fingers, but I don't get the bottom of the image because it's saying I can't go any taller without cropping off her head. And uh, I, can, I could live with that. But what I get to do because I'm in Photoshop is I can go ahead and say, nope, I want all of the, all of the bottom. And I can even use this as an opportunity to recompose the photo. I want all of the bottom. And let's make sure we got it there. And uh, just a little bit on top. So I basically need Photoshop to create this extra part. Now I could use uh, content aware and that'll probably work since it's a solid background or I can use generative fill or generative expand I should say and that'll generate the pixels um, so you could try either one content aware fill doesn't cost you anything to do meaning it's just gonna do it and uh, oh hang on there's one more thing I need to clear here let me let me go back in four by five eight by ten I want to clear this I just want the aspect ratio I don't want resolution because I saw the photo get smaller so let me do that one more time. There we go. And content aware fill is probably gonna work out great for this because it's just a background and it just does it perfectly. Great. So now I have, if you posted this portrait on Instagram, it's not gonna need to crop anything. It's gonna be perfectly as you see it with everything in the photo you want. So that's something Lightroom can't do. It can't add pixels in any method uh, to a crop. So that's why I do that here. All right, so we'll save that, we'll close it. We'll head back to Lightroom where it's gonna put it and right next to the original. That's why I said I always have a copy. I always have the original to get back to. And now I've got my newly edited photo, which good, like I said, didn't need a whole lot. I could be picky and tone down the hot spot. I guess I could say that would be one more thing I would do. And that would just be a matter of, um, here, let me show you real quick. Uh, that would be a matter of, uh, let's go back, edit. This time I'm going to edit the original because I don't want, I don't need an extra copy. And we're just going to go back and do one more thing. So I'm just going to go ahead. Now I will duplicate the layer. And now I will go in and zoom in. And if I wanted to tone down the hot spot here, because that's just a little too, but a little too bright. Then I'll grab my clone stamp tool. I would switch my clone stamp tool to darken mode, which is right there. I would set my opacity to 40%, which is where I usually start. And I also make a preset for this so I don't have to keep doing it. But anyway, uh, then I will go in and I will grab an area of skin that's not hotspot, so just right there. And I will just come down here and just click, click. That's probably too much. Let's just make my brush bigger, 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 bigger. And let's grab that spot again. There we go. Now I know it looks awful like what it's going to do, but it's, remember, it's only doing 40%. So then if I need to blend that in, then I would blend it in. And if 40% is not enough, make it more. If 40% is too much, make it less. But that is one way to soften those hot spots is by simply blending them in over time. Um, with Oh, and by the way, that's the other problem. Hold on. I see one of the bigger problems here. Big problem is that this brush could be softer. All right, there we go. I want that to blend in more. All right, so now we'll um, undo, make my brush bigger. 
hold down the option or alt key, get a part of the face that's not, there we go. Now it's gonna be nice and soft. And we just go ahead and just keep putting that in. And if we need to blend the edges, we can, but that will kind of reduce that hot spot. Now, you also have, keep in mind, you have your history brush. So if you need to say, hey, I don't know what's going on on the nose here, I can just undo that part with a brush. And, uh, oh, too much. Undo that part with a brush. And then if I need to patch or anything to blend that in, I would. So you can also uh, fade what you did. So you can fade the history brush or fade the, the clone stamp. So if it's too much, you can bring it back a little bit. But that's kind of where I would go with that, that hot spot. It's a little, I think I overdid it a little bit too much, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. All right, um, but that's the last thing I would do there is just um, reduce that hot spot. I don't like the dark, it, it got, I did one too many clicks, but you get the idea. All right, yeah, see that is very noticeable when it's smaller. But forgive me, I did one too many clicks. Don't do that last click and just uh, not go that dark in that one spot. All right, next next up, next photo. Because I could go back and fix it, but then we won't get to another photo. All right, next up, let's go back and, or let's go to the next photo and talk about this one. Now, a landscape photo looks like it's either you shot it with a drone or you're on some kind of hill or whatever. And, um, and I see some, some keywords there. Uh, let's go in and let's do our thing. So go to the develop module. Let's go to, to basic panel. Uh, this is what I mean by if it's a JPEG, you don't have that, um, you don't have those raw profiles. So nothing to do there, but I will hit auto. Auto did brighten up the shadows a bit. It, there's some clipping going on, but I can't even see where it is. So I'm not worried about the shadows there. And this case, I don't mind if it adjusted the vibrance and saturation. I think it's good. The only other thing I might check while I'm here before I head to Photoshop is in the uh, effects panel. I'm sorry, not in the effects panel. In the basic, pa basic panel, I would go in and say if I want to add maybe a little bit, mo little bit more dehaze to, those, to that sky to kind of bring back in some of that blue. So that's before, look at how washed out the sky is. And that's just bringing back in a little bit more of that sky detail by dehazing it. Now, the only other thing I would head to Photoshop for is what's bugging me is this tower. Like this is just a distraction. It's not adding any value to your photo. It's just, there's a tower in the background. Why do we need that? So let's head over to Photoshop. Now, because it's a JPEG, it is gonna ask me, do I wanna make a copy? Yes, I do. And we'll head over to Photoshop or Photoshop real quick. And we're in Photoshop. We're just going to use that brand new great remove tool. We'll make the brush a lot smaller. And we're just going to go down and brush this. And I've got mine set to where it doesn't do it instantly. In case I miss a spot, I can keep back and keep coming back and brushing again. And now we'll go ahead and click. Um, yes, I'm done. And it will then. Um, It'll then do the, the uh, what do we call it, the processing to make that uh, go away, and it did. So, and there's a little spot here of something, I don't know what that is. Just, just clean up at this point. We would keep the pier, obviously. These are parts of the photo. That's another antenna. I don't know if we need these antennas here. So, I would just go ahead and probably remove those. Other than that, we're done. That's pretty much it. Save that one, close it, come back, and it will put it right back next to the original because we told it to make a copy. Next up, we have this, um, this photo that kind of needs a little restoration work. So what I would do before I head to Photoshop is kind of some of the same things, but there's one more thing I would do here, is that when we have these old um, photos that you can, you can decide, it's up to you whether or not you want to keep them sepia tone or not, um, I don't, I usually turn them into black and whites, but it's up to you. Yeah, so this is what I would do. So this is what I would do. So uh, again, not a raw file, I wouldn't expect it to be. Let's go ahead and hit auto. And again, I this is where I disagree. I don't think it should be that much brighter. So I'm gonna pull back the exposure a bit. Again, I don't need vibrance and saturation. I'm gonna turn those off. And now I'm gonna switch the profile from color to monochrome that'll make it a black and white but that's just the default black and white 
you can go in and choose browse and you can get to a bunch of black and white presets. So this way you can hover over each one until you figure, until you see the black and white you want. Uh, so these are all different effects, different black and white presets. And I kind of saw one I liked already. Just keep track of the number because they're all numbered. And if you think, if you mentally make a note, hey, I like number 11. And if I don't find a better one, I'll go back to number 11. That way you can kind of like uh, just pick the one you want. I also like um, black and white red filter V12. So let me see if I like that better than 11. I'm just hovering over these. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that one. And again, it's all non-destructive. Close it. If I ever want to go back to color, I can just switch it back to color. But that preset is now applied to this photo. Now, the next thing I would do is there's some cleanup work and things I would do in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and head over to Photoshop. Command E, PC, Control E. Yes, I want to do it with a copy. Now we're in Photoshop. So I'm going to do a couple things right off the bat. Number one, there's a dark line here where it's kind of like, um, looks like the photo might have been in a border when it was scanned or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply crop this. Now this is... Uh, this is not a specific, it doesn't need to be a specific aspect ratio, but since I'm on four by five, uh, and actually, no, I'm not going to keep it that. I'm just going to clear the aspect ratio and that way I can crop it any way I want. So I'm just going to go up to the top here and I'm just bringing in the sides a bit. All right. And again, I could do the aspect ratio. I could do it also when I'm done, if I want to make it um, more. All right, so the next thing I would do is I would head over to my filter menu and I would convert for smart filters to make it non-destructive. And then I would go into the filter menu one more time, go to neural filters. And in neural filters, there these are all AI based. There is a photo restoration beta neural filter. So I would choose that just to see what it does. Clean up the photo a little bit. Uh, the face doesn't need any more enhancement, but I could probably stand a little bit more uh, photo enhancement. And I could probably scan, stand a little bit of scratch reduction. And that's just going to make for a better photo. All right, we'll let it finish calculating down there at the bottom. Finish processing, that is. And also choose my output as a new layer. That way I still have the original to go back to, and I'm liking what this did quite a bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'll put that as a new layer. That gave me the before. See how much, see how much difference that filter just made? And after, beautiful. Next, I'm going to go right back to the neural filters. Because I just want to see what it would look like. There's a colorized neural filter. I just want to see what it would do to this photo to put it in color. So colorize. Not bad. It got some things wrong, like it, it's kind of making the jacket and the clothes multicolored. But look at the face. Look at the hair. That's great. So it did a great job on the skin and the face and the hair. It's just doing weird things on the clothes. So you could keep that as an option. You can always output that as a new layer as well. And maybe then you colorize the clothes manually or you make them all the same or you don't care and you leave the clothes Kind of rainbow colored. <laughs> Even tried to make the flower yellow. So it did a good job on that. But that's an option before, after to make it color. So that's what I would do to that photo. Now, um, if you wanted to take it up one more notch, we could go back to that crop. We could go back to a 4x5, 8x10. And we could then use generative expand. So we can say, hey, I would love this if it, I just want to see what it will do. It's either going to make it good or it's not. <laughs> That's the problem with uh, 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 generative AI. You just never know what you're going to get until you see it. So I just want to see what it will do to the top of the head. It'll be interesting to see. And we're already at time in just a minute, probably by the time this finishes. I see a seam here that I could kind of patch out. That would be my only problem. Oh, by the way, I get three choices. Let me see which one I like better. Yeah, it's not great. That was probably be the best. That would probably be the best one. And then I would have to blend in that uh, that seam. But it gave me a it gave me an option to choose. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, yeah, still have the original to go back to. 
All right, uh, and let me show you what that means in terms of I could patch it or I could use the remove tool to see if I can get rid of that um, that one last thing here. Or maybe I can't. Here, let's make a composite layer. There we go. And I'm just going to brush that. I just want to see what it would do with the remove tool. And click OK. Yeah, I would patch it because the remove tool it just doesn't know what I want. So grab the patch tool and simply grab this seam and make it seamless. Not content aware, sorry, normal. There we go. Yeah, I would patch the seams out piece by piece and that would be it. All right, folks, that is my time. Uh, save that, head back to Photoshop, and you are, you're good to go. So thanks everyone for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.